Some people say that when life gives you lemons, you can make lemonade, and if life gives you a handful of metal, maybe a barrel or two, as well as some flammable chemicals and a few small objects that you can use as projectiles, and then you can make an entire battlefield's worth of improvised weapons if you're dedicated enough, creative enough, and in some cases, merciless enough. Number 10. The Killdozer The story of how Marvin Hiemer came to make the Killdozer, that his name will be forever attached to, is something of a sad one. Hiemer had been in a three-year-long fight with City Hall in the town of Granby, Colorado. The city had approved the construction of a concrete plant next to his machine shop. He didn't like that, and petitioned to have the land rezoned, but to no avail. For years, he fought against the construction of the plants, but it just didn't pan out. Finally, Hiemer had had enough. Using his knowledge as a mechanic and a welder, he turned a bulldozer he had in his shop into what came to be known in the media as the Killdozer. He outfitted it with armor plating and completely enclosed the cabin, engine, and some of the tracks to make it virtually unstoppable. The outside was shielded by a steel wall that was hollow and filled with concrete. This created a one-foot-thick stone shell bordered on the inside and outside by sheets of steel. The effect of Hiermaier's incredible engineering feat was that when law enforcement attempted to use small arms and even explosives to stop him, it proved utterly useless. The bullets bounced off as though they were shooting at Superman himself. Hiermeyer drove his killdozer through the town hall, the local newspaper, a hardware store, the concrete plants that he was opposed to, the home of a judge, and some other houses as well. Anyone who had wronged him in his zoning permit pursuit was destroyed by the killdozer. His rampage lasted two hours at remarkably slow speeds and caused seven million dollars worth of damage. It only stopped when the killdozer got stuck on the foundation of a building and couldn't move any longer. Hiermeyer took his own life ending his path of destruction. Number 9. Pipe Bombs Some of the oldest explosives in the world, and even to this day some of the most terrifying, pipe bombs are simple and brutally efficient. There are records of people using pipe bombs as far back as the late 1880s to wreak havoc and cause death and injury. In its simplest terms, a pipe bomb is just what the name suggests. A length of pipe packed with explosives and the ends capped off so that there is increased pressure to maximize the damage when it explodes. Soldiers in the Second World War were actually trained in how to make pipe bombs in a pinch. They are so commonly used that the school shooters at Columbine had actually made a handful of pipe bombs that they planned to use as well. They've been sent to many politicians over the years and still remain a popular choice for people making improvised explosive devices because of how simple and easy it is to make them. That's what makes them so terrifying. It takes such little effort to make these devices that there really is no way to predict when or where someone might set one off because literally anyone could gather the material from just about anywhere in the world. Number 8. Vasily Zaitsev's Anti-Tank Sniper Rifle Vasily Zaitsev was one of the most famous snipers in military history, with over 400 confirmed kills during the Second World War. It was his prowess as a sniper that led to one of the most devastatingly effective improvised weapons of the entire war. Zaitsev used the scope of a sniper rifle and rigged it to an anti-tank gun, effectively making an anti-tank sniper rifle which had not existed before. The result was a weapon of remarkable destructive capability that could also operate at a stunning distance. Number 7. Molotov Cocktails Few improvised weapons are as recognizable and down and dirty as the Molotov Cocktail. Just about everyone has heard of one, as they've been a staple in movies for years, and arguably anyone could make one with a few simple household ingredients. All you need is a bottle full of flammable liquid and a rag stuffed inside to act as a wick. The Molotov cocktail traces its origins to the Spanish Civil War. When faced with nearly impervious tanks, Francisco Franco ordered the development of incendiary devices that could burn the tank's treads, rendering them all but inoperable. They also ensured that the crew inside the tank would either have to flee or burn. The name Molotov cocktail was actually from the Finnish army. When the Red Army was invading Finland several years after the Spanish Civil War, the Soviet Minister of Foreign Affairs, Vyacheslav Molotov, assured citizens on the radio that they were just dropping humanitarian aid when, in fact, they were bombing the population. The Finnish soldiers responded by saying that they were replying to Molotov's humanitarian packages with Molotov cocktails. The rest 
is history. Number six, Fugas Flamethrower. There are few more terrifying ways to meet your maker than in a blazing inferno. That's pretty much what a flamethrower threatens to do when you see the business end pointed in your direction. Though anything that can direct flames could be considered a flamethrower, the modern idea of a flamethrower as a weapon dates back to 1901 in Germany. And while a fuel tank with a propulsion system in the form of a gun is terrifying, a Fugas Flamethrower is even more terrifying. The Soviets employed Fugas Flamethrowers as early as 1941. The concept was remarkably simple. A barrel of flammable liquid is buried in the ground with a nozzle sticking out that directs it wherever you want the fire to go. They could be operated remotely and would just belch forth hellfire until the fuel source was emptied. Improvised Fugas flamethrowers have been made on battlefields all around the world. All you really need is a barrel with a hole in the top to get the job done. They are inelegant but extremely deadly. Number 5. Hell Cannons The name Hell Cannon sounds awesome in enough in terms of Warcraft, and it certainly seems like something that should have a licensed manufacturer. Nevertheless, the Hell Cannons made in Syria are simple yet effective destruction tools. The Free Syrian Army has a reputation for making some deadly yet effective weapons, but the Hell Cannon is a real standout. Essentially a homemade howitzer cannon, the Hell Cannon's most famous munition is not a typical mortar or rocket. Rather, a propane tank is rigged with fins to make it aerodynamic and stuffed with extra munitions. Munitions. So, how effective is the homemade cannon? Depending on the size of the munitions, it could hit targets up to a mile away. Keep in mind, the accuracy of this cannon is almost non-existent, so wherever it hits a mile away wasn't technically a target, but sometimes the psychological effect is all that matters. Number 4. Sham 2 Tank Proving that the forces in Syria are not one-hit wonders, not only have they developed the Hell Cannon, they've also managed to create their very own improvised tank. Built on the chassis of a normal car, this heavily armored vehicle features a turret-mounted machine gun and is also capable of operating with nothing more than the controller of a PlayStation 2. With a video display inside connected to externally mounted cameras, the operator of the Sham 2 tank could be relatively safe inside of the armored vehicle while still being able to see everything, steer the vehicle, and fire the weapons. No doubt this weapon wouldn't stand up to a legit military force and heavy-duty anti-tank munitions, but on a battlefield where quick thinking and improvisation are the order of the day, this is the king of the castle in terms of impromptu weaponry. Number 3. Marble Gun Back in the day, if you spent any time in the countryside, there was a good chance that you learned the ways of the potato gun. This homemade weapon was used to fire a potato with some pretty impressive velocity and caused a bit more destruction than any tuberous root vegetable has any right to do. The evolution of the potato gun in the modern world seems to be the marble gun, a quick and dirty homemade weapon that can fire tiny glass marbles. Kids in Asia, particularly, have taken up the hobby of making marble guns for target shooting and just goofing around. And while it seems like it's all fun and games, the fact of the matter is that these weapons can be incredibly dangerous. There was a story in 2014 from Vietnam about a boy accidentally fatally shooting his friend with a marble gun. And that's exactly why this improvised weapon ranks on a list with massive tanks and cannons that are used in real-life warfare. When you make something like a killdozer or a hell cannon, you do it with the express purpose of knowing that you're going to hurt, maim, and perhaps even kill somebody. Nobody expects a marble gun to fatally kill a child, but the fact that it can happen makes it one of the most terrifying things out there. Number 2. French Nail Trench warfare was brutal and terrifying during the First World War, but it was not uncommon. Close quarter combat made firearms useless and melee weapons were the order of the day. Soldiers had knives or bayonets, but in messy conditions on a long enough timeline, these kinds of weapons can get lost or destroyed. That meant they needed to improvise something new on the front lines with limited supplies. Dubbed a French nail, these trench warfare weapons were essentially whatever you could give to a blacksmith that he could fashion into something with a blade or a point on it. There are museum examples of pieces that are just bent rebar with the end sharpened into a bayonet point. Others were fashioned from pieces of barbed wire fence post. Whatever scrap metal was handy could be used, and the weapon would be quick, dirty, and deadly efficient. Number 1. nail -a -rang. Bruce Wayne clearly has some skill fashioning improvised weapons shaped like bats that he can throw like boomerangs that come with the cool nickname Batarang. While forging something like that in the real world would take a little bit more skill and effort than the average non-superhero has, there is a bizarre alternative that is remarkably efficient and incredibly easy to make. So easy, in fact, you can find YouTube videos showing you how to do it. A nail orang is essentially just a few nails welded together with some tape wrapped around them. It sounds goofy and kind of childish, but video demonstrations show that these things fly incredibly
incredibly well and can stick into a target with a scary amount of force. The thing that makes a weapon like this so unsettling is just how incredibly easy it is to make. You can buy a handful of nails down at the local Walmart, get yourself a welding torch, and suddenly you have some makeshift throwing stars that stick into their target with ease. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.